Hi, thanks for being in a new video. Let me summarize for you what I liked most and least about the Vivo V30 Lite, in case you're considering buying it. So, as always, let me tell you, don't buy the Vivo V30 Lite without watching this video. Let's consider its launch price, which is 8999 On the screen, you see the reference price in dollars. Honestly, I consider it a little high. So, based on that price, let me tell you what I liked best. It gives you a two-year warranty, something few manufacturers offer these days. Most of them offer you one year, so it can be an interesting point. In fact, they also include insurance, although you have to read the small print, but it is something that generally other manufacturers do not offer. So these are key points in favor of this device. And patia sa pamasa sa Manisa Tamagadina, it definitely has a very nice design. The satin finished cover is going to help you not so easily get fingerprints on the back, and so using it without a case is nice. It includes an audio redirection function. This feature will allow you to send the sound of some applications to a Bluetooth speaker while keeping the sound of other applications playing on the cell phone speakers. So in a way you could say it's a kind of audio multitasking. And this is a feature that I've only seen present in Samsung and Vivo and that most other manufacturers don't incorporate. The front camera is 50 megapixels and has autofocus. It even has zoom on the front camera. So the front camera is one of the protagonists of this device and in this price range it is unusual to find front cameras with autofocus. So as you will notice, even looking at the camera interface itself, you are going to see that it has a lot of options for the front camera, being one of its priorities. So if you like selfies a lot, you might come to enjoy this device. Since it not only has good specifications and good options, but also the results are going to be really very good, including a sufficiently agile capture. And on the back it includes an aura light that you can set its temperature to be cooler or warmer and it's not just a simple flash. So even though the photographic system is not that advanced on the back, the aura light can give an interesting touch that you don't find on other devices. Video recording with the front camera also looks very good. Plus the autofocus helps a lot and also the fact that you can zoom while recording video on the front camera can help you if you want to show details of your face. It's also going to give you through software good security options including app locking, it also allows you to clone apps, even isolate them in a secure environment. So in that sense, I think it will satisfy a lot of users. It also has storage storage and RAM storage. Honestly, those are considerably good features. You have plenty of space to store all kinds of documents, photos, and more. And with that RAM memory, you will definitely be able to open many applications at the same time. And finally, something that I liked is that it comes with good gaming software options with different types of additional tools. Although it's not necessarily very powerful for gaming, but talking about the added software, it's good. Now let me tell you what I didn't like. For starters, it does not have Gorilla Glass. At this price again, we can demand a little more protection on the screen. Although Vivo usually works other types of protections for their crystals, but does not get to communicate them clearly enough to give us a little more security regarding the resistance of that glass. It only integrates a speaker with mono sound. In this price range, it is very common to find devices with two speakers that will offer a much more immersive audio experience. So in this case, it falls very short. The rear cameras are not going to maintain a very consistent color representation between the two. That is, the ultra-wide camera, you're going to notice that it has a little bit more exaggerated color saturation. So being very demanding in this aspect, we could ask for something better. It does not have 4K video recording. In this price range, it is becoming more and more common to see devices with these capabilities, but this Vivo V30 Lite still can't record video in this quality. So if your priority was video recording, it still feels a bit limited here. Also, the main camera reckons it doesn't record record at 60 frames per second and in the evenings you're going to notice that it has really poor quality. This device comes with Android 13, so it comes outdated from the factory and also does not offer you a very extended update policy. In addition, the software is quite simple, so it does not have floating windows, no battery care options and other things that other manufacturers are incorporating. It has Bluetooth 5.1, which in the middle of 2024 is starting to be a bit in the past and in this price range perhaps we could ask for something a little more recent. While you're not going to notice a huge difference, it's it's always better to have the latest versions of everything you can. The proximity sensor I definitely didn't manage to activate, so it's something I definitely didn't like. Also, Vivo doesn't have a very good ecosystem to speak of. It doesn't offer that many accessories to connect with each other. It doesn't have technologies developed by the brand itself in this regard. So the experience will be simple depending entirely on Google's ecosystem. It incorporates the Snapdragon 695, which while not bad, in the price range you can definitely find more powerful processors. In games this translates into acceptable performance when playing, but if you want to record gameplays definitely not going to have enough power. Now that you know what I like the most and the least, let me know your experience in the comments in case you have already bought it and we'll see you next time.